Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand and today's episode is all about extremes. See that subscriber button folks? Click it and then click the like button because the more subscribers I get, the more of these we can do. I depend on everything. So thanks for watching. Anyway, today's episode is all about extremes. We're going to go from big to the small because a lot of people have written in and said they can't find this, they can't find that, but there's stuff out there, especially if you know what to look for. So I picked out a few planes, some of which we've talked about in the past, and I'm going to show you the kind of variation that you can get. One of the most common planes, and we've talked about this before, is a rabbit plane. These are pretty inexpensive because they're very simple and antique stores don't charge very much of them. And they come in a whole range of widths, right? This is a thin one, but they go up to like two inches. What I want to talk about today is the fact that they also come in different lengths. Look at this. Here's one that's considerably longer. Here's one that's even longer than that. And here's one that's really long. Now, what's the story there? Well, let me show you. We put a piece of wood in the vise and we take the really long one, which, by the way, these are frequently in old catalogs referred to as ship rabbit planes. You'll find that we can take a really nice long shaving quickly and more easily than if we use the last one. Plus, we can use it on the side too. So I think that's pretty amazing that you can go from a really short plane to a really long plane. Here's another kind of plane. We've talked about this before. This is your basic jointer, uh, your basic, um, yeah, your basic jointer plane. Uh, jack plane. And it does all sorts of things. We, it's a, one of the most frequently and first used planes. And they're all about this length. But if you have a special job to do, you can find little tiny ones. It's essentially exactly the same plane, although you'll notice that the iron is a little more upright. But if you've got to get into the corner somewhere or work in a really small detail, Look at the difference in size there. At the other extreme, and I think we've shown this plane before recently, here is a jointer plane, so-called because it planes the edges of wood that you want to join together. Look how long this is. So you can see that in the basic bench plane series, you can go from minute to medium to huge. Here, is another set of planes. I think we've talked about these in the past too. Uh, these are a pair of planes which are used to make tongues and a matching groove. This one, when you use it, ends up cutting a tongue. And this one, when you use it, ends up cutting a groove which will fit right into there. These are the basic nine and a half inch long planes. And don't ask me why it's nine and a half, but starting around the beginning of the 19th century, most molding planes and special purpose planes, they all became standardized at about nine and a half inches. So this is the regular tongue and groove pair. But look at these. These are called ship tongue and groove planes. Maybe because they were used in the shipbuilding industry. But the naming of these tools has a lot to do with the companies that sold them. And companies use different names. But this was a common term for this. Look at this. This is a grooving plane. Right? And it has a lot of adjustment. You can unscrew this all the way to the end. And then you can screw that in. And here is its partner, the plane that makes the tongue. You can see the tongue here. Not only are these planes much longer, but they also have a much bigger adjustment. These don't. These are made to make 
one size tongue and groove. So I'm showing you this because I want you to be aware of the fact that once you understand the basic armament of planes, that there are lots of different kinds. One last thing I want to show you is that there are also planes that are not straight. Here are three planes typically used in the old days in the carriage making business, but they're extremely useful if you're going to make high end furniture, which unlike a lot of contemporary furniture, which tends because of the machines that everybody use, tends to be very rectilinear. These are planes that can be used for making curved surfaces. This is essentially a rabbit plane, but it's got a big convex sole. So it's really useful for curving, making a rabbit in a curved surface. Here is one that's even more sophisticated. It's a rabbit plane because the blade goes all the way across and it's curved like this, but it's also curved this way. Another example of how sophisticated some of these apparently old antique tools can be. And lastly, here's a plane that cuts a V groove in a curve. I have here a plane that I've yet to sort out picked it up recently. This is a regular V grooving plane. And I would start off by maybe making a rabbit or a little groove. And then I would use this plane once I've cleaned it up and sharpened it to make a V groove. And see how long that is. At the other end of this scale, here is a little plane that's called a squirrel tail plane. Does the same thing. It's a V groove. So you could use it like this and it would cut a V groove in there, but you could also use it because it's so short on a curved surface of wood. So I just wanted to alert you to the fact that you may not have seen too many of these tools, but if you poke around at junk stores and antique stores and you go to the auctions or whatever, or go to eBay even, there is a wealth of sophisticated planes that may look a bit old fashioned, but which actually will give you a bigger potential woodworking vocabulary. And they cost a whole lot less than fancy machines. And they're easier to use because you don't have to waste any time setting up jointers and table saws and routers to do something that the plane to do the job already exists. And because it's a plane, one last advantage, the surface left by a plane is invariably superior to the surface left by a rotating router bit. So I hope you like that. I wish you a lot of luck in your search. Be alive to the fact that there's lots of things. You can learn a lot more about these tools, by the way, going to my website and picking up one of my books. Uh, for example, the... Uh, books on traditional woodworking hand tools. There is a lot of stuff out there and I hope you have a lot of fun using it. So don't forget, as I told you before, hit the subscribe button and the like button. And by all means, send me queries and questions and I'll do my best to uh, look after you. Thanks for watching.